Well, got the board erased. Nice clean board we can start. Let's talk about things that are not measured by GDP. Because GDP isn't going to tell us everything about a country. One of my fields of expertise where I do a lot of my publication and research is economic development. And that's looking at countries that are not as industrialized and how can we help them and how can we measure where they are. And you know, you can't just look at the monetary. You can't just look at, at uh, GDP or even real GDP, even after inflation. Um, there's something called GDP per capita. which is per person, basically. This is the amount, basically. This is what it means. This is what it's called. And you could say real GDP per capita. And that's a start. But even so, that money measure doesn't tell you a lot. Um, let's see. got a list of things it doesn't measure, so I don't leave anything out. Um, does not measure GDP, does not, that's an O, not measure household production. I know a college professor who pa paid his way through his doctoral program as a carpenter. And now, every summer, he builds a house while he's off, you know, during the summer. He builds a house. He's not working for anybody. And he does sell the house, but it might not show up if, if he's, it ought to show up if he's acting as, as a contractor. Um, so that may not be a good example. But in other words, he's doing this work for himself, and then he has an extra house to rent out. It might not show up. How about if you take the summer off, and you're a teacher, and you build a big deck on the back of your house, and it increases the value of your house? That's probably not going to get counted. Think about. I know uh, women's groups have been very interested in monetizing the value of, of you know, the, the work done by back in the days when women, many women stayed home and took care of the kids and cleaned the house. Well, how much work is that? How much is that worth? They were, they were trying to make the point that it was a valuable thing and that it should be counted in GDP. Um, I haven't heard anybody talk like that in a couple decades. But still, household production. Is there somebody at home producing something that's increasing value to the family uh, and it's not actually being charged or counted? Um, nowadays, it could just as well be, you know, in fact, in my house, I'm the, I'm the handy person. My husband is a banker and he just doesn't handle tools very well, you know. If he tries to work on something, he ends up, you know, ah, inanimate objects, you know. And I just love to work and work in things and build bookcases and uh, and it, and it doesn't get counted. So what else? It doesn't count the underground economy. We all know what the underground economy is. It's not counted. It's stuff that's done under, underneath the table, um, cash purchases and sales that don't get counted. Um, when regulations and taxation are high, it drives more people under, under the, uh, into the underground economy. And they buy and sell things for cash. Right? 
And so it happens that the more regulations you have and the higher the tax rate on income, the GDP numbers tend to have a, a, a redu there tends to be a reduction in those GDP numbers because uh, uh, people are hiding what they're doing. Underground economy. It does not measure well-being. Maybe we're all buying guns because we are all scared to death. We're, you know, suddenly we're living in a barbaric world. That, you know, GDP goes way up because there's a lot of production of guns, right? And, uh, but that doesn't mean that we're happier. Or maybe we're all sick because there's lead in our water. So we're all sick and, uh, you know, drinking too much lead and it's making us sick. Um, GDP might not, might not show that we're spending all this money on hospital services and that means we're sick. So it doesn't measure well-being. How about leisure? My grandmother worked 12 hours a day. Her, her husband died and she wasn't finished raising her kids. So she had to get a job. She worked 12 hours a day, six days a week. And that was pretty normal in her, for her generation. Scary, isn't it? <laughs> I can't imagine not having a full two day weekend and having to work. 12 hours a day is what, four hours past the amount of time we work when we work full time? You know, instead of working, you know, eight, eight hour days, they add an extra four hours a day. <sighs> leisure has increased. We have a lot more leisure, but if we look at a list of GDP, all it shows is how much stuff's being produced. It doesn't say, we're better off. It doesn't measure pollution and crime. I alluded to that already. That's an R. Um, it does not measure distribution. I think that you can't see that. I'm not sure if you can see. I'm going to look, take a peek. Okay, there's just a little enough space here for me to put distribution of income. If you take my economic development course, I can explain other measures that explain how to tell whether it's a country with a few rich people and everybody else is poor, or if it's a country with a large middle class and there's a lot of happy people that are getting by okay. There are measures, GDP is not one of them. It just measures the amount of stuff, really, produced new this year as a final product in uh, in our country by anybody, okay? Okay, so now let's look at what it measures, how it's measured by going back to the circular flow. So we had firms, you remember that? And we had households. And the households sent their money, uh, sent, excuse me, sent their resources. You remember that? Resources. Land, labor, capital, and uh, uh, enterprise, right? Okay. And then the firm sent back the rewards. And that was, uh, for land, it was rent. Labor, it was wages. Capital was interest. And enterprise was profit. Okay, and this market, what do we call it? Let me get a different color pen here. This was the dollar flow, this, this one here, right? This was the resource or the factor market, depending upon your textbook, resource or factor market. GDP is not produced, is not counted there. National income is counted here.
in the resource market. And literally, it's the sum of the rent, the wages, the interest, the profits. That's national income. GDP is in the product market. So I'm going to write GDP at this point. And this one, by the way, is NI. GDP is in this market where the households send their dollars and they get products and services. But it's more than that. We break it down into a little equation. And it's one of those equations you just have to know for the rest of the class, for the rest of your life, hopefully. Okay. So it's not just products and services. We count that as uh, Remember, there was other sections. Do you remember there was a financial section, there was the rest of the world, there was government. You remember that? And we had financial services. Remember, uh, I'll just call this finance. And then we had the rest of the world. And flows went in and out of that as well. Okay, so. Go back in your notes if you don't remember it, because I'm drawing it really hastily here. The point is, GDP counts consumer spending, business, business investment, which I'll talk about in a minute, government purchases, and net exports, which is Remember, exports was X and imports were M. So this is net exports. X minus M. And I really need to write that out much more clearly because I need to give you definitions of this whole equation. The point I'm making here before I erase this is that except for a few a few balancing entries, national income and GDP should match. Now, if this was GNP, they would be a lot closer. Because remember, national income, that's going to be the income of nationals, and GDP is going to be anybody in our country, so there's going to be a difference, um, a net difference in foreign factors at making income. So it may be a plus or minus. So uh, this one will be smaller than this one, and you would have to add in um, things like uh, depreciation, because depreciation comes out of profits. I mean, it comes out on the, as a tax deduction for businesses, and it's not counted as much. But over here, uh, this is going to end up being spending, okay? So this is the product market. This is where we get our income. This is where we spend it, right? We spend it and the products and services go back. So this is the product market. So national income is computed here. GDP is counted in the product market as all these different kinds of spending on different things. And so we've got depreciation, we've got uh, uh, net foreign factor income, sort of as some of the small balancing entries, and excise taxes. And then they also have something called statistical discrepancy. And so you would, you would you could add these things in to get GDP, or if you had GDP, you could subtract those things to get national income. Uh, but basically, that's how they actually, when they figure this out and they count all this, um, at, at uh, federal government agency, you've got one team calculating this, you've got one team calculating this, and when they, when they know they've got it just right, they meet in one room and they, they, they see if it balances. And if it balances, they're like, okay, everything's been counted because it should once we make a few of those little tiny, 
tiny uh, entries. And if it doesn't, they go back to work. So anyway, I wanted to erase this and get into this formula and explain the bits. I'm going to have some homework with this, this uh, lecture. In addition to just watching this, I've got, I want you to go online and find some things and submit them to me. So um, let's get back to this equation. C plus I plus G plus X minus M equals G D P. Uh, there's also something called NDP. If it's GDP, then there's a little, let's put the G down here this time, a little subscript that says this is gross investment. And there could be, if you had net investment, then that would be C plus I N for net plus G plus X minus M. And the difference is something called depreciation. Uh, if you subtract depreciation, you get net in investment. So let me explain what depreciation is for those of you that haven't had it in a class yet. Depreciation is the wearing down of equipment. And uh, you know, your factory needs a new roof. And uh, so over time, you, the factory's worth less because it has to have a new roof. If you were to sell it, someone is going to say, oh, I'll buy it, but it's got a bad roof, so I'll give you less, right? And your car depreciates, you know that. And so businesses are allowed to take a tax deduction for that and count it. And so there are some years.